If you're in the market for a used Sportster, the later model Sportsters may offer some features that might be worth paying a little extra for. So today, we're going to take a look at those features and find out if they're actually worth the money. So over the years, the Sportster's got a bad rap from its rigid mounted engine, extreme vibrations, and, well, lackluster suspension. But before we get into all of that, please be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. Okay, so as we were saying, rigid mount, terrible vibrations, and less than wonderful suspension out there. They did correct it, but it wasn't until here in recent years that they actually addressed a lot of those issues. So we all know, 2004 for the most part, uh, rubber mounting was the big deal. They got rid of the rigid mount and they came out with the rubber mount system, which is great. I mean, it smooths out when you go through the gears and you get rolling down the road. Of course, there are some quirky spots in it, but for the most part, much smoother ride, except for at idle. Well, <laughs> at idle, it gives you, you get the feel of a Harley, which it isn't bad at all. It really isn't. So in 2007, they went to fuel injection. That was the major, major change in 2007 was the fuel injection. And also in 2007, we got a awesome set of heads. Like before 2007, the heads that were sought after were the old Buell heads. Harley took basically a page out of Buell's playbook and updated the heads on these for 2007. So if you have a 2007 or later model, the heads are pretty dang good. Maybe even arguably better than the old Buell heads. So for the purpose of this video, I'm mainly going to stick to improvements that went across all Sportster models. So no matter what Sportster model we're talking about, these improvements are going to apply to every single Sportster model. Except for some of the engine updates, that'll just apply to 1200 Sportsters. So from 2007 on, most Sportsters had a 9.7 to 1 compression ratio, all the 1200s. There wasn't a lot of huge improvements other than some new models that came out after 2007. As far as suspension and brakes, it all pretty much remained the same. The Sportsters had a dual piston, single caliper that was 292 millimeters up front. And the rear brakes was a single piston caliper at 200, with a 260 millimeter rotor. Now, like I said, the bikes pretty much remain unchanged except for colors and introduction of new models from 2007 all the way up to 2014. Now, the 2014 model year, this is where the changes started to really roll in. Now let's take a look at some of the changes that they made in 2014 that might be worth looking at. Starting with the engine, in 2014, they upped the compression ratio from 9.7 to 1 to 10 to 1 compression. Not a big difference, but it is a change. Arguably, maybe a little more added performance and supposedly supposed to keep you off having to run premium fuel, which even though they recommend premium fuel, yeah, don't run anything but 91 in them or they'll knock like hell. Don't ask me how I know. So 2014 also brought about what Harley Davidson called the new foundation brake system. This is where they completely went through the entire brake system on the Sportster. They updated the master cylinders. They put bigger brakes, bigger rotors on the brakes. They put better calipers on them, a lot more rigidity and a lot more positive feel when you hit the brakes. The size of the front rotors was increased from 292 millimeters to the 300 millimeter disc we have here. They ditched the single piston caliper in favor of this dual piston caliper. We got rid of the rubber brake lines and Harley Davidson gave us brand new steel braided brake lines for 2014. A redesigned and improved front master cylinder, a new redesigned and improved rear master cylinder. Out back, we still have the same 260 millimeter rear caliper. But just like the front, they added a larger 34 millimeter caliper with dual pistons. Also new for the 2014 and up models, Harley-Davidson introduced the CAN bus system this year. This is basically a more simplified wire system with a body controller rather than having a plethora of relays, fuses, and switches to operate the electrical system. And Harley-Davidson also says with less wiring and less components to the electrical system, it also gave it a much cleaner look. As far as these newer models go, the only visible wiring that really that you could see, that is about the most of the wiring harness that you're gonna see on these bikes. To go along with the new CAN bus system, Harley-Davidson also updated the voltage regulator. 
with larger fins for improved cooling and better reliability of the electrical system. So the 2014 and up Sportsters are already getting more modern. I mean, this has been going on for years with other brands, but hey, it's Harley. This is innovative for Harley-Davidson. Now, love it or hate it, in 2014, Harley-Davidson introduced what they called the closed loop exhaust system. What this basically meant was they added the O2 sensors to the exhaust system. So instead of the fuel injection reading and kind of guessing from the entire map, when you're at cruising speed, it goes into closed loop mode and the O2 sensors are sending feedback to the ECM and it's making your fuel adjustments with only within your cruise range because these are narrow band sensors. But what this basically equates to is cleaner emissions, but it does give you better fuel mileage when you're just cruising down the road. Now, arguably, if you have a bike that has these O2 sensors installed in the exhaust, you can put slip-ons on, run your stock air cleaner, and not have to tune the motorcycle. But just because your bike has O2 sensors in it and you put a set of slip-ons on it, even though you may still be running the stock air cleaner, that is up for a lot of debate on whether you need to tune the bike or not. I personally, I have my own opinions on that, but that's for a whole nother video. 2016 brings us to our last major Sportster update. And this is a big one. They should have done it a long time ago. Harley Davidson's motto is evolution not revolution, and as Willie G once said, it is form over function. So 2016, the major noticeable change is the new suspension that they added to these bikes. We've got a coil over shock called what Harley Davidson called the emulsion suspension system. This has been a major change for the factory suspension over previous years. It doesn't have rebound adjustment, but it does have preload adjustment, which hey, it's better than nothing, and some of the older Sportsters I rode with stock suspension, this is a major improvement. Now, of course, if you ride the 48 or the Iron 80, 883, you've only got about, uh, roughly about an inch of travel in the back. Now, the 1200 Custom, it's got a little over two inches of travel, so it does ride a little bit smoother. Now, the other major improvement they made to the suspension is one that you can't see. It's in here. They got away from the old damping rod system, and they went to a cartridge system. Now, the damping rod system was used on sport bikes back in the day, and most cruisers, a lot of cruisers still have it today, but, you know, I gotta give Harley-Davidson credit for going ahead and putting a cartridge system on their Sportsters. Now, it does handle a lot better than the damping rod system. I noticed a major difference on these bikes. But, as always, with suspension upgrades, Harley-Davidson does offer a complete adjustable front suspension for the motorcycles. The stock one is not adjustable, but Harley-Davidson does offer a Screaming Eagle adjustable front suspension for them, as well as some piggyback rear shocks out back. Personally, it's kind of one of those things that maybe should have came stock on it. 2014 gave us another great little feature, which was you could toggle everything, your trip meter, your mileage, your clock, you could toggle it all from the handlebar. Harley also gave us this neat new feature. 2014 and newer, you actually have an electronic tachometer now, which is very, very handy. They also gave us a gear indicator and tachometer. So if you're looking for a used Sportster, maybe 2014 and up's the way to go. They got a lot of neat features on them. But, you know, if you get a good used one and it works fine for you, that's all that matters. Just some considerations to think about, unless you're gonna buy an older one, and you already have plans to update the suspension, do the steel braided lines, do the brakes, and add some of your own custom items, then you're probably not really worried about any of that. But if you're just looking for a bike that you can buy and ride, and has some good, neat features on it already, these might be the way to go. Look at something 2014 and newer. Anyhow, guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to like the video, subscribe if you haven't already, and stay tuned. I've got some, uh, got some interesting things coming. Gotta change the tire out on the bike. She's getting pretty bald. Actually, it's, I could probably go drag racing as a slick on it. I ran it way too long, but we're gonna fix that here pretty soon. So anyhow, guys, till next time, stay safe on the streets, ride smart, dodge cars, and I'll catch you next week.